Tuesday in December. So how's everyone doing with, with COVID and how's everyone feeling like today? Is it a zero to 10? How's everybody doing? Seven. Seven? Six. Six, okay. Anyone else? Oh, about a nine. Nine, okay. I'd go with nine. Nine? Nine. All right. So my name is Margie. I'm a registered dietitian and a certified diabetes education and care specialist here at UC Davis Medical Center. I work with Dr. Lopez and some of the, um, the physicians that are part of the Sac State program. And I really enjoy coming and being on once a month or so and supporting your program. So thank you, Linda, for the invitation. You know, today we're going to talk about and Linda, I think I need you to forward the screen because I pressed the button and it didn't work. What do you mean by forward the screen? I can see your, your party. Uh, right, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to advance the slide and when I press the arrow, it's not working. I think you might have controls. No, I don't. Oh, let's see here. Oh, there it goes. All right. So now we got it. All right, so today we're going to talk about nutrition and weight management in the era of COVID, um, which has been challenging. And then also over the holidays, it's really hard as well. So this is an interactive presentation. So I'm going to ask questions and I really would appreciate just participation and make this kind of an, an open forum discussion. And that way too, the presentation more meets your individual needs and concerns as well. Well, everyone so, has to unmute themselves to be able to answer your questions. Yeah, and if you want to, you could just keep them unmuted. But if you if you do have noise in the noise in the background, then go ahead and mute. All right. So when we talk about um, the holidays, is that something that that some of you typically kind of find it's difficult to keep nutrition healthy? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it is hard, you know, and then the concern is that for some of us, COVID's been difficult and not all of our health habits have been good during COVID. And then now if we put on top of that the holidays, it's kind of a perfect storm of unhealthiness if we let it be. So, the, um, so some of the presentation objectives is to identify what lifestyle habits have changed negatively since COVID, verbalize what lifestyle habits you are doing well with, list, list lifestyle risk factors for COVID complications, state how to boost your immunity um, during COVID, explain ways to maintain a healthy weight during COVID, um, identify lifestyle habits that are difficult during the holidays and ways you can stabilize your weight during the holidays and then develop some goals to improve your health through COVID. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So here I have the question or, or the statement, changes in your lifestyle habits since COVID, has anyone have any, had any? It's interesting because my husband and I had a talk about this yesterday and I was speaking to a nurse here at UC Davis and we both came to the conclusion that initially with COVID, we were really in it as a team. We felt encouraged. We were exercising and eating healthier. We felt like we had a strategy. And now nine months in, we're pretty fatigued. Damn it. And I think that we're finding in our family that we're not eating as healthy, our exercise is diminished, and we're not feeling as strong in terms of a team, as a family team, in being healthier during this time. So let's start with healthy, uh, but let's start with eating habits. So who here has feel, feels like their eating habits has changed during COVID? And if so, how? Yeah, you know, I'll say something. Our eating habits have changed a little bit because we switched over to an all plant-based diet. Uh -huh. And now with COVID, 
uh, we just pick up our groceries at Rayleigh's and a lot of times, you know, they don't have what we want. So, you know, that's pretty frustrating, especially the produce and things like that. But, mm -hmm. you know, we're trying to do what we can, but I think, I think we're still eating pretty healthy, although we do tend to go to some of the processed vegan quick meals every once in a while. Mm -hmm. You know, Dave, I totally understand. I think that when we try and eat more fresh fruits and vegetables and plant-based, often that kind of requires going to the grocery store a couple times a week or going to the farmer's market. And we can't, we don't have that kind of access right now, especially we'll be shut, shutting down even more. So I agree that it's more difficult. But good job, good job keeping, keeping some of it up. How about anybody else? Is anyone else snacking more or is that just me? I was at the beginning and then mm -hmm. I decided if I was going to snack, usually it was stuff that was not good, mm -hmm. not as healthy as, it, as I think it ought to be, but I still did it anyway. I okay. now um, st uh, always, I try to always have uh, carrots from Trader Joe's, the little, they're about four inch long and also the little ones. And uh, they're multicolored, so it's sort of neat. You think you're getting a treat, even though they're carrots. Um, and they're organic, so that's good. Mm. Uh, but I decided if I was going to do anything at night, that uh, food that was not conducive to a real healthy diet, I had to have uh, a, a handful of carrots or some um, radishes or something before that. So before going to the sweets, I went to, I, I go to the thing and most days I can adhere to that. So I get extra vegetables. Uh, some days I don't have the sweet and some days I still do, but, but, uh, but it's, it's, and it's definitely, you know, I go into the kitchen thinking I'm going to get chocolate and I wind up with carrots, uh, but I'm working on it. Really good job. You know, I also really enjoy those rainbow carrots. They're just, they're just fun and we have to keep things fun now. It's so yeah. important for us, but really good job. Um, you know, I'll have to say, and I'm sure some people on the line have not done as well. I mean, I think this is two really great examples of people who've recognized what they've been struggling with and have made some choices to, get, um, to kind of make some changes in the right direction. I'm sure not everyone on this call has had that as the case. Um, I know here I'm a registered dietitian and I found myself like looking for more carbs, looking for more sweets, um, choosing that chocolate. And so if any of you are maybe dealing with the stress with food, maybe irregular meal timing or not choosing nutritious choices or snack habits, I understand. And it's just important at this point to recognize that and we can make a strategy for change. So how has COVID changed your physical activity? Mine's way down. Way down? And how come, John? Um, I used, well, I usually do a lot of walking and I used the, the uh, wellness programs, treadmill as a way to sort of keep a high average. So I've been averaging less than a mile, well, it's almost two miles a day, but that's mm -hmm. not enough. I probably should have four or five. Okay. And that's, so when you're talking about shopping, I use shopping as my excuse. I am walking uh, two miles or three miles just to get those steps in. Mm -hmm. But it's still, I can hardly wait to get the treadmill back. Mm -hmm. If I had it in my house, I wouldn't use it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's good for drying clothes. Mm -hmm. it's, that's it for me. You know, I totally agree with you, John. I think that it's that community that we find when we go to the gym or you'd go to, um, to the rehab program to get some exercise and it's difficult that our schedules have changed. I would say then also we had the fires too. So it's COVID and then those of us who used to, we can't, we can't go to places to work out. And then those of us who walk outside, I found that once the air quality was really bad, a lot of, that's kind of when a lot of my outdoor exercise was hindered and stopped. Um, how about everybody else? Any other examples? I, I seem to be doing more indoor exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to COVID, I just went to the gym and did maybe an hour on the treadmill and then got over 10,000 steps. Now I'm getting less steps, but more exercise, if that makes sense. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. No, that does make sense. Um, and so I'm really glad that you're tracking and that's the important thing. 
So often when we have significant changes, whether it be like the holidays or it's been a, maybe a travel schedule or when we're sick and now COVID, it does change our, our regular habits. And once we get off those regular habits, sometimes it can take a long time to get back into new habits. So we've definitely seen an impact with physical activity. So another question that I have for you is brain stimulation. I know there's a lot more isolation right now. We may not be playing games with friends or some people craft with friends. I know some men who do woodworking with friends and just kind of find some um, brain stimulation. Have, has anyone here found that that has changed? Not really. I've, I've uh, been reading a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, and a friend of mine got me started on the free streaming Metropolitan Opera. Mm -hmm. I hate opera, but I'm turning out that there's actually something pretty decent there. So that's going. And mm -hmm. then uh, I've, my daughter has been asking for recipes and uh, there's a pseudo chicken bouillabaisse base that mm -hmm. is waiting to be made. Uh, so that's, I'm, I'm opening up new areas because the, my usual ones are closed. Mm -hmm. Well, that's fantastic. And you, you found some different activities. And they do have virtual tours of museums. They're having some live streaming ballets and operas. So there are definitely some different things for us to be, um, to be stimulated by. But it is really important that we're proactive and that if we're not being stimulated enough, that we, take, we look for something new. And John, you found some things. So that's terrific. Now, this one, the sleep habits, the next one, Many people don't understand that really um, sleep habits and weight management are very directly related. We find that anyone who gets either inter many interrupted sleep, so you don't get restful sleep, or you don't get enough of length of sleep, we find that often they don't have the bandwidth to go ahead and make healthy eating habits. And we find that they're much more likely to be overweight. And that also goes for people who work nights because their schedule kind of moves around a lot. So how's your sleeping been since COVID? Now mine's about the same as it's always been, but I'm a, a night owl because I like to watch all of the uh, late shows. So mm -hmm. I'll go to bed about one in the morning and I'll wake up feeling fine about 7.30. So I'm only getting about six and a half hours of sleep. Okay, but you feel okay. Yeah, I feel fine. Good, okay. And if anyone is waking up often and not sleeping well, and especially if you, you have cardiovascular disease, you wanna make sure that you talk to your doctor about that and get a sleep study, because you may have sleep apnea. And again, that affects weight, but that also affects cardiovascular health. Now, often we don't talk about this, but bowel habits are real important. And sometimes under stressful times, it affects our bowel habits, as well as if we, we don't drink the same amount of water or if our eating habits are changed because of stress. So um, I do want you to think about that. We don't have to necessarily discuss that, I, but we do want to think about that. We're seeing more incidences of GI upset, of irritable bowel, and again, that could be stress-related, and it is part of your health. And so if you're not going enough, like you want to address that um, through the increase of higher fiber foods, if, if that's approved by your doctor, and it's not in, uh, if you can handle the fiber and lots more water, too. So the other thing is stress management. And... It's interesting, I, you know, I'll just give an example of my husband who was, has been really overweight in the past and has lost a lot of weight and doing great. Um, and we, we were both doing really strong at the beginning of COVID. And then um, this week, I've just really saw him kind of, kind of break and realizing that his stress management skills are excellent. And I think in his situation, it's COVID lockdowns, Plus, it's working from home and increased stress with his job. And then his mom is really sick. And so he's been having several things build up. And um, he's not someone to have an anxiety attack, but he actually walked into Trader Joe's yesterday. Um, he had the mask, his mask on, and he literally started to hyperventilate and had to go outside. And I think that's kind of a symptom of the stress level. Um, has anyone else had any difficulties with stress management or anxiety? I 
think the closest for me was when we had all this smoke. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was a, just a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. But now that, now that we're into fall, it's <laughs> we're back yeah. to normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we don't know. Like, we don't know what the next several months are going to be. And COVID is going to be, at, this COVID thing is going to be at least another six months. And so I think when we think of the long haul, like you're in cardiac rehab for a reason. You already have underlying risk factors. And so the stress management is a really big key. And even if you're handling stress great, the stress under COVID could not be good for your health, um, for your cardiovascular disease. So you do want to be really mindful and then reach out for help if you're having a hard time. And this does affect nutrition. So it happens when we have more stress, it um, goes ahead and affects our immune system. And the immune system could go ahead and lead to illness, a poor immune system. So the next thing is hydration. And I've definitely felt being at UC Davis and wearing masks all day, it's really hard to take off the mask and drink all the time. And a lot of us here are not, realize we're not drinking enough water. And then hydration is affected by water intake, alcohol intake that makes you dehydrated, and also caffeine intake. Um, so how's everybody, what, Betty's water intake? Awful. Awful, yeah. yeah. I should drink more. <laughs> yeah, I kind of wish I could see thumbs up. I could say thumbs up or thumbs down for water intake, and I think mine would be thumbs down. How many thumbs down? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now how many people's alcohol intake has gone up Mine is thumbs up. Anybody else? Thumbs up? Down. <laughs> yeah, or thumbs down. Okay, and then the same thing, caffeine. Are you thumbs up or thumbs down with caffeine intake? Down. Down. Okay, good. The same. The same? Okay. Yeah. And, you know, and I think everyone, all of us are in a different, you know, a different boat. I think that like for us, we used to have one glass of wine every other week. And all of a sudden in COVID, we realized we're having a glass of wine several nights a week. And it's just good to evaluate. I mean, all these questions are saying we're nine months into the pandemic. Your health matters. At the end of COVID, I don't want you to be less healthy. And many, many Americans are going to be less healthy, even people who are normally healthy. So this checklist is saying, OK, right now, today, where are you at? And this is a marathon, not a race. We have at least another six months, if not greater. What do we need to work on? You know, the next thing is social connectiveness. And it's really connecting with someone in a positive way. Um, even more importantly, is connecting with someone who loves you every single day. Um, so has anyone felt isolated? Sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's really hard. Yeah. Does anyone have family or kids far away that they can't see now because of COVID in, 20, in 2020? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's what texting is all about. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's mm -hmm. not the same. Mm -hmm. Oh, it isn't. I would, mm -hmm. I, I would gladly trade it for a hug, but the thing mm -hmm. is there is a daily connect or regular mm -hmm. connect, and, and sometimes that will, that's a good Band-Aid. Yeah, you know what, I'm really, really thankful that we have um, social media now and we could go ahead and stay connected to some degree. If you think about it, 10 or 15, 20 years ago, if this happened with COVID, before cell phones, before Facebook, FaceTime, texting, we really wouldn't have a way to connect. So I'm really glad that we are, but it's not the same. And so it's just important to realize that. And then the other thing is medication and adherence, um, taking medication without skipping doses. And sometimes under stress, and if people are off their routine, it starts to affect their medications. Um, has anyone here struggled with that? Or is anyone else doing great? Doing pretty good in the morning, uh, but the late night dose at 11 sometimes gets to be one o'clock if I don't wind up um, in the mm -hmm. back of the house where it's stored. Uh, mm -hmm. It's all, you know, I always take it, but it might be late. Yeah, and so it's, it's good to come up with a strategy, you know, but and, and again, schedule changes, it does affect us. Okay, so, you know, and talking about that's kind of the general health, that list, and all of those things can and eventually will affect our health as well as our weight. And so just um, so you know that more than half of the population finds that weight management during the lockdown is difficult. 
And so more so than the holidays. Um, and maybe it's because of the long duration of COVID, um, but generally speaking, um, a great number of people have gained greater than, fi than 15 pounds. Um, and the causes of stress eating and that snacking or even larger portion sizes and we don't have the bandwidth and what I mean by that is underlying stress that just makes it harder for us to cope. Um, snacking out of boredom, um, challenges to finding healthy food and that was mentioned earlier that you know, you're trying to do plant-based but, you, but you're not supposed to go to the store as often and then also more time spent in a sed sedentary I'm um, just sitting around so we have found an impact in COVID and weight and health and so weight gain um, puts patients with cardiovascular disease at even greater risk of um, COVID complications um, it's interesting here, like I know several colleagues that have gotten COVID and some people personally, and it seems to be like either you're, you're positive and you don't even know you have it, or you have minor symptoms like cold or allergy. And so um, and a lot of people don't think they have COVID and it ends up they go in and they are tested. That actually happened to some people here. Um, they were really, really surprised. It was just like minor cold symptoms. So that's like the the first two easier categories. Um, the next category are the people with high fevers or the people with um, just extreme fatigue. Um, and we're seeing that as well and how fluids is so important in that category. And then some of those people progress to um, more like to pneumonia in weeks to come and end up in the hospital. So that's just my observation of what I've read, but also kind of talking to many people who've experienced COVID. You know, COVID causes inflammation in our cardiovascular system. So if you already have inflammation, whether it be from diabetes or high blood pressure or heart failure or coronary artery disease, you already have that and then COVID's gonna add more. So if you're eating unhealthy and then weight gain is another, str another strain on your body, you can be putting yourself at increased risk. So before I go to the next one, next slide, one thing that I did want to mention, and it's interesting, the research indicates that, that people within the COVID and the quarantines, the weight gain is up to like 15 pounds, and that seems to have like, could have long-term medical impact. Where if I, you look at retrospective studies over the holidays and what happens between Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's, that weight gain is usually like three to five pounds. So there is a difference. And then typically speaking, with the holidays, people are able to kind of bounce back within a couple months. Where with COVID, it seems like it's, it's lasting and staying on longer. People who struggle more with COVID and the holidays with weight, typically speaking, are also people who've struggled with weight in the past. So whether it's stress and the way that we learn to cope. So if you have a, a previous history of overweight or obesity, you may struggle more now um, with, with the holidays and with COVID, which makes sense. So one of the things is that the literature shows that good nutrition to fight COVID is extremely important. And just to fight it off, just in case you happen to get it, um, but keep your system strong and maybe even not getting it, um, is so eat to strengthen your immune system. And the, the key parts of that kind of diet is vitamin C, A, B12, B6, and E. Zinc is really important. Iron and vitam and vit um, vitamins. I think that not the vitamins supposed to be gone. <laughs> Just zinc and iron. Um, so there is some recommendations that as long as it's not counter, um, not indicated with some of your medications that you're on, you could talk with your doctor. That especially if you get it, that you want to go ahead and take vitamin C and zinc supplements, and maybe even before some of that is in those tablets that you take when you go on a plane to help not get, um, not get a cold or to ward it off, just make sure it doesn't hinder any of your um, medication absorption. Now in the context of that, there is no studies indicating that supplementing with these vitamins will help you during the time of COVID. What they really recommend is food 
And it's because we know that, food, that vitamins and minerals from food get absorbed much better than vitamins and minerals from, than vitamin supplements. So just like the plant-based diet that many of us are working on, and really what that is, is being more plant forward, where the vegetables on our plate, we plan the vegetables first. Maybe we're gonna have a salad and broccoli, but really think about it as being that the vegetables are the stars of what you eat and spend the time in what vegetables am I gonna eat? And then the, the meats are more like a side dish. But in terms of vitamins and minerals for immune health, um, the, veg the vegetables and fruits are the most important. Um, I know that we want to try and get some fresh vegetables like spinach or greens, but frozen vegetables are okay, and so is the low sodium canned. So especially now during COVID, I don't want you going to the grocery store too often. I do recommend having a backup of some frozen or canned vegetables. Um, so of course, daily whole grains, um, nuts, and I put us in small portion because nuts are one of those really calorically dense foods. You know, just a quarter cup is almost 200 calories. So we don't want to go ahead and have like a whole cup of nuts or to graze on nuts. We want a controlled portion of, and a controlled portion of any calorically dense food. Um, with, in terms of this is plant-based eating as well as COVID for immune health, we want to look at white meats. Um, so white meats or plant-based protein. Now, in terms of, of cardiovascular health, they find like chicken without the skin or turkey or fish is cardiovascularly neutral. It doesn't hurt your cardiovascular system. It doesn't help it. So if it's going to help you to follow a plant-based diet to have a little bit of white meats, it's okay. You know, or a plant-based protein like your beans and peas, your tofu would be another great choice. And then someone here talked about the planning for snacks and it's so important to have planned snack foods. And so you know, I want a snack, you know what you have and what you could eat. Um, snacks for fruits and vegetables and really reduce your added sugars and not go for the sugar or carb snacks. And then, um, make sure that every single day you eat plant-based fats. Again, fat or intake of fat, it's high, high calories. So for example, a portion of avocado is about one quarter to one fifth of an avocado, but it's so good for you, you wanna have that. You know, if you wanna have nut butters, almond butter, peanut butter, you don't want more than a couple tablespoons. And once again, just like for cardiovascular health, for COVID weight management and COVID health, you want to limit your salt intake, your sugar intake, and your white flour. Now, I was really happy after the last time I spoke, I saw in the emails that you all were sent the black bean brownie recipe that I spoke about in my presentation. Did anyone here try that? Are you it's all still there? Agenda, not yet. Okay, good. <laughs> I just want to make sure that everyone's still there. <laughs> yeah, the black bean brownie recipe is absolutely delicious. Okay. So, um, so again, for for COVID, um, they think the quarantine 15 is real, and from most in most cases, the quarantine 15 extra pounds is coming from increased sugar increased carbs with snacking and meals, and also more alcohol. And so those are really the areas that we need to watch. And, you know, for cardiovascular health and for cardiac rehab, that's the, that's the areas we also need to watch. So you're helping to prevent, you know, more complications with COVID and you're um, assisting with your heart health. So then there's the holiday two to five pounds. And I think it's from sugar and butter. What does everyone else think? Those are the that main culprits right. that I used to have. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're out of the, the kitchen now, but. Good, yeah. good, yeah. You know, I think that just, even though I love those cookies, you know, I grew up in an Italian family and my grandma used to just make cannolis every holiday season and it's such a, uh, 
a kind of a special part of my my history of knowing having those foods at special occasions. It doesn't necessarily mean that we can't have it at all, but I'm really trying to control the portions. And even this year, like I'm not baking and bringing things to people like I used to. I'm going to do more healthier options. So trying trying to limit our exposure. Um, so trying to find that balance. Does anyone else here like cannolis? The Italian cannolis? I haven't I had do. them in years. The, yeah. the bakery that used to get them at in, in uh, Berkeley is no longer in existence, and I'm no longer down there very often. Yeah, so. and it, there was one up in, I think it was in Fair Oaks, there was one down at Tello's. It was a wonderful Italian family here in Sacramento that was like 50 years, and now they went out of business. It's very sad. I don't, I don't want to hear about any new ones. I can look at them and, and dream. But, uh. Yeah. <laughs> the one, the ones at North Beach in San Francisco. Oh my gosh! Mm, yeah, those those were fabulous. Yeah, and it's so good. We were in Italy last year, and my husband actually, I have to be gluten free. He actually found me a gluten free cannoli. I was so happy. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so again, some of those special foods, <clears throat> and I think it's important to ask ourselves. I'm going to get a sip of water here. And I think when we think about cultural or celebration foods. There's a lot of those foods that I get or see that I don't really even like that much. And so like, leave it. Like I tell my new puppy, leave it, right? But if there's some, a few of those that you just absolutely love or are an important part of your culture, at the holidays, it's okay to go ahead and have one of those. It's okay to kind of fit those in. Um, and really, if we just stay away from the things we don't even like that much and only have the things we absolutely love that are special to us, it's a really good balance. So I really want you to think about with this presentation kind of going forward, you know, kind of evaluate, okay, I'm nine months into COVID, I'm past Thanksgiving, but I still have Christmas, New Year's. For me, it's then my birthday, then it's Valentine's Day and Easter. I kind of see that my eating habits used to be off like Halloween through Easter. Um, so kind of evaluate where you are with COVID and the holidays. And one of the things is positive self-talk. What have you done well? I've heard some great examples of some of you have done some terrific things. One is the snacking on, on the rainbow carrots as opposed to the sweets. Um, someone else is really realizing um, you know, plant-based eating is a little bit more difficult, but you know, is making those choices. So can anyone else tell me here, what have you done well? Can anyone give me an example? All right. I need to be one of the few who responds. <laughs> yeah, a different person. <laughs> like, I love hearing from you though, but Elaine, were you gonna say something? I was just going to say, I, because nobody, I used to be a trainer and it's a bad habit of mine. If a trainer or somebody giving a lecture asks a question and nobody answers, I <laughs> how it used to be. So I always try to think of something that said, and, but what I do do is, is go back to the vegetables. I either I go, and I've been buying mm -hmm. um, the Trader Joe's prepared salads and throwing mm -hmm. out the salad dressing. Uh -huh. So, and just eating the salads. I happen to like my salads naked, as mm -hmm. the friends used to say. Yeah. But uh, again, in the evening, I wind up, and then I found out if I deliberately, I had my protein, and then a couple hours later had the vegetables specifically mm -hmm. so that I had got them, but also uh, fulfilled the snack requirement um, mm -hmm. that works. Mm -hmm. And I uh, highly recommend, there's several of the recipes that Trader Joe's has, and um, you can't get, more, well, I can't get more than two because it's just me eating them. So by, by the second one, it's, you know, they do die on you because they're fresh. But yeah. Look for the pull date and get a long pull date, like 10 mm -hmm. days or something. Mm -hmm. And it works well if you, don't, uh, if you don't open them until you're ready to use them. So instead of mix and matching, I eat one and then I eat the next. Mm -hmm. uh, but each one for me is good for three days at least, or three salads. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, when I can get to Trader Joe's, I get a couple of them and so on. It, it's... Uh, it's easier for me not to have to chop up everything um, on my own. So I know it's a little bit more expensive, but I decided I was worth it. And coming to that conclusion made a big difference in my eating a bit more healthy. 
Oh, great job, Elaine. You know, I, I also get the Trader Joe's salads and they're like $3.99 and $4.99. So in the big picture, they're not that expensive, but I know what you mean though. And um, I also, I, I use half the dressing or like one third and I add vinegar, like some kind of vinegar with it. But that's a great example. And, and thank you so much for sharing. You know, I think that every one of us here, even if you don't say it out loud, I want you to take a minute and say to yourself, like, I'm doing this well. Because each one of you, I'm sure you are doing something well through this time. And I want you to be able to, to really recognize that and encourage yourself. You know, and that's always, I think, is that we put ourselves down, think first, like, what am I doing well? Then we could say, okay, what needs improvement? And I think all of us could come up with something that needs improvement. Um, a question that I have, though, is does, um, does your home environment support success? And so some people are working at home, or maybe you're at home with too many people now, or maybe you're at home with your husband or significant other, and you never used to be in the house all day, every day with each other. Um, but really ask yourself, you know, does my home environment support success? And if not, is there anything I can do about it? Um, focus on easy meals and pre-planned snacks. I love that Trader Joe's idea. Um, I go to Grocery Outlet also, and Grocery Outlet has these individual salad bags um, at a great price, like um, a kale salad. It may have pecans with it and a dressing. And then I'll add um, either tuna or chicken, but make it easy. Um, plan ahead and shop smart. Um, have your list before you go to the store. Um, really important to spend time out, outside daily, even if all you do is walk around the block. And then also ask for support and assistance. If you're having trouble with meal planning or, you know, try and make it fun and, and ask for help and, and to share it with somebody. So here are some examples to kind of let things to stock up on, especially as we're going to probably be closing down more in the Sacramento area. It's just kind of fun um, to stock up on some kind of seasonal flavors like canned pumpkin. Um, I have canned pumpkin at home and it's great to make um, pancakes with pumpkin in it. It's really, really great. Um, there's some terrific recipes on the internet about using canned pumpkin to go ahead and make a whole grain muffin or even I make my own, my own pumpkin spice latte. This is a recipe and a crock pot pumpkin spice latte that's a little healthier. But um, if you have a favorite seasonal flavor or food, um, enjoy that now. And pumpkin has a lot of vitamin C, which is going to help with COVID. Um, so think of whatever your seasonal flavors that you like. Um, Another thing is make sure that you have seasonal spices on hand, like pumpkin pie spice or cinnamon or nutmeg, um, some kind of seasonal spices. Um, or, the, you know, the mulling, um, where you kind of kind of mull um, apple cider in, um, in spices is always great in small quantities. Um, for COVID, for storing, I really like the winter squashes, whether it's a fresh pumpkin, spaghetti squash, butternut squash, you have all those hard squashes and those will actually last several months in the cool weather. So I store mine in my garage. So it's just a great option to make sure you have those hand on hand in the coming months. Um, you could use them as a side, like a vegetable um, with spaghetti squash. You could brown turkey, um, ground turkey or ground, lean ground beef, and you can make like a spaghetti, um, spaghetti sauce, I guess, and you, you take out the, the spaghetti noodles or the, the, the squash, spaghetti squash, when you take out the inside, it looks like spaghetti. So you could have spaghetti squash and um, spaghetti sauce. Um, I've also seen recipes for baked squashes where you fill the center with vegetables and meat. So really take advantage of the winter squashes. Um, in season produce now that's pretty shelf stable for a while is the citrus, like the, um, the oranges, mandarin oranges, navel oranges are in season right now. Um, apples, pears, uh, persimmons, and pomegranates. Um, my pomegranates kind of go bad a little bit more quickly, so I keep them in the refrigerator. But the rest of those, you can get them at the farmer's market or in the grocery store, and they will last at least a couple weeks. Um, I always have on hand frozen berries, so frozen blueberries or um, a mixed fruit. And then that way, if you don't have fresh or if your fresh has gone bad, you have a fruit option. And that's a terrific dessert or you can make a, a green smoothie with it. I, I always have on hand frozen spinach, frozen broccoli and green beans or frozen vegetable blends. 
Again, you want to make sure you get as many vegetables as you can every single day. And having frozen just assures you have it available. Um, for proteins, a great protein to keep on hand is the egg whites in the carton. Um, those usually last a month or so. Um, you also have the tuna in water or even salmon in water, um, frozen chicken, of course, and then also the ground turkey um, is a great kind of COVID stock up. Make sure you have it on hand for meals. Um, for snacks, um, popcorn, um, hummus and whole grain crackers or carrots are great. Um, both of those, the hummus lasts in the refrigerator for several weeks. Um, and then also, like I love the Trader Joe's, the black bean tortillas and salsa. You could also put some of the fat-free um, refried beans with those. This is great snacks. Um, for your just your calcium choices, um, non-fat Greek, Greek yogurt lasts for a while in the refrigerator. Uh, the Laughing Cow Light Cheese is a great little spread to put on um, bread or anything, or um, a whole grain um, English muffin. Um, and when I really enjoy the high protein, non-fat or low fat milk, like the Fairlife milk. Um, that milk has half the carbohydrates, it, they've cut it out. It's lactose free and it has more protein per cup. Um, and there's some other of the higher protein milks that you're seeing on the shelf. Um, those are more shelf stable and again, less carbs, more protein, and it's just a real great thing to have on hand. Um, they do have the chocolate versions that are a little bit more sugar, definitely, um, but if you're looking for a little bit of a splurge, um, that hot cocoa makes really, really nice hot cocoa. And then also just something to warm you up at night or even if to sip on, if you're feeling a little hungry or just want some warmth, um, make sure you have some really good herbal teas like mint, ginger, um, Meyer lemon. Also, if you have a cold or just in general, I like the Breathe Right teas. Um, and also there's the Smooth Move teas if you're having any constipation or even just to help keep you regular without extra medications. So this is kind of my stack up for COVID and the holidays list. And I guess you could take a picture of it if it's helpful for you. Can I ask a question about the Don, can you go, yeah, the yeah. Don fat milk. I used to get the low fat milk, you know, 1%. Um, and then somebody told me that the additives in that aren't that great as just getting regular milk, since I don't drink a lot of milk. I may, may have a glass a day. Usually I, oh. if I have a cup of coffee, I have, it's mixed like uh, uh, coffee con leche. Uh -huh. so, um, is there, does it make a lot of difference to go to the non-fat? The, the concern that a friend had, and she's partially a nutritionist, uh -huh. uh, is, was that the non-fat had so many additives that I might as well go with the, the real thing and just get, you know, pure cow's milk without all the um, stabilizers and so on. Not, mm -hmm. not necessarily the vitamins that were added, mm -hmm. but the stabilizers. Yeah, so if you look at the cartons of like milk for milk, um, I've rarely seen additional additives in a non-fat mil fat milk than a 2% or whole milk. So I'm not sure which one she's talking about. There are some milks like I look for that like an almond milk and soy milk. A lot of times there's a lot of added stabilizers in those. And so those I think make a difference to compare brands and not have additives. I'm not sure what she's talking about, but make sure you look at the labels. This was several uh, years ago. So I mean, it was yeah. my participation in cardio wellness at least. Mm -hmm. so it's been a long time, but, but I've just, mm -hmm. I, I just went back to whole milk and mm -hmm. I, you know, I, mm -hmm don't use that much. I don't use, I don't think, I'm sure I don't have more than eight ounces a day. So mm -hmm. I figured that the difference between the non-fat and the whole milk at eight ounces a day shouldn't be that much. And then the additives, but, and I had checked the additives again. It's, it's, it's been, uh, oh, at least four or five years since this has happened. I just wondered about changes yeah. in the technology on, on how stabilized they were. Yeah. You know what? Um, milk, I'm really glad you actually asked this question because milk is not a cut and dry kind of thing. Um, some people are lactose intolerant. So if you have any regular GI upset at all, I would try lactose free milk. Um, so with, if you have coronary artery disease, so if the issue is that your arteries are getting clogged or you have a history of high cholesterol, high triglycerides, high LDL, 
Um, for coronary artery disease, the recommendation is a really reduced, a strict, a reduced saturated fat diet. So if you have milk with, with fat in it, the saturated fat is any fat that comes from an animal product, like egg yolk, for example, like the skin on your chicken, the marbling in your beef. So that is why when we talk about the reversal diet or a really you know, more of a strict plant-based diet, we're really trying to get rid of the saturated fat. So if you have coronary artery disease, and if that is why you are in cardiac rehab, you know, in a big picture, if all you're having is one cup or a half cup of whole fat milk that day, if you're really not having any other animal fat, then go ahead and have it. Or if your issue is not coronary artery disease. In general, we recommend like low fat, like a 1%, just because we don't need the, most people don't need a lot of extra saturated fat. Um, also to think about it is that if you're living with diabetes and if you're drinking non-fat milk, it is kind of straight carbohydrates. So you're drinking you know, liquid carbohydrate that kind of like the carbs could affect you similarly to juice. So if you're living with diabetes, I'd actually like to have it a little bit more like a 1% or 2% milk so you're not drinking straight carbs and your blood sugar won't spike as much. So with milk and milk products, everyone's kind of in a different situation. And it's kind of to ask yourself, like, how much milk am I drinking? Why am I having the higher fat choices? And um, does that make sense? Absolutely. I guess I'm back to 1%. Yeah. And so that's what, um, that's why. Yeah. And, um, and I would say like when I teach families, like even with, with children, for example, I never recommend whole milk because in a lifelong habits, we don't want to be having that much saturated fat. But yeah, so if that makes Margie, sense. Margie, Thanks very address, much for the explanation. Linda, I'm sorry, what? Where, how nut milk fits into this diabetes picture? Oh, the, um, the nut milk? Almond or just cashew or whatever, the, the non-milk milks. Yeah, and the diabetes picture. Okay, yeah. so like, so when we think about now, there's like a ton of different milks out there. As a dietitian, I get confused, right? There's the oat milk out there. I've seen avocado milk. I've seen almond milk. I've seen soy milk. Um, I'm, I've seen pea protein milk. You know, I've just seen a ton of different milks. <laughs> so um, I think alternatives to cow's milk um, if you're lactose intolerant, or if you just don't like non-fat milk, or if you're really trying to go plant-based only for health reasons, whatever that is, those, uh, those options are great. The really hard thing is there's such a wide variety of choices. So it's really about turning that curtain over and looking at what's in it. I've seen some soy milk and some almond milk, which is a ton of different fillers and everything, and not very much calcium and not very much protein and straight carb. And I say to myself, like, how can this be better than, than regular milk? I don't think it can. So I think you need to ask yourself, what are you, what are you looking for? If you're looking for calcium, then make sure go ahead and read the label and make sure it's, it's high in calcium, right? Um, so a lot of the almond milks or the nut milks will be higher in fat. It is a plant fat, but it's higher in fat. And then the question is, if you're looking for a diet that's overall low in fat, if you have a lot of that almond milk or cashew milk, are you having too much of a total high fat? So those things are, it's, a, it's, another, it's not cut and dry. Um, it's almost like gluten, people who go gluten-free, like it's a processed gluten-free food healthier than whole grain bread. Absolutely not. Um, so it's really kind of a balance. And the only way you're going to know about that product is to turn it over and see what's in there. So generally speaking, we don't want something that's just giving you liquid carbs and nothing else um, without the vitamins and minerals and protein. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, I was just wondering, do the nut milks have this amount or more carbs or less carbs? Than... Um, it it kind of depends on what's blended in with it. And, um, so usually the nut milks are higher in fat because almonds, for example, are mostly fat. Um, but again, I've read the labels and I see other things added. Or a lot of times, especially the almond milks and soy milks, a lot of times there's, there's added sugar. So has anyone here made their own almond milk? 
I haven't. I have made my own soy milk, though. You have? Okay. Yeah. And, and um, how did you do that, if you could let us know briefly? Well, uh, you soak the soybeans overnight. Mm -hmm. uh, you stick them in a blender the next morning and blend for a minute, and then put them in a nut milk bag and squeeze out the squeezins. Mm -hmm. uh, then there's a, a beany taste to the soybeans. Mm -hmm. So you you have to put this in a, a pot and bring it up to a simmer for about 10 minutes and you're done. Terrific. Uh, you know, that's, and I, for a friend who does that with almond milk, I've never done it, but she swears by it. She says all that stuff is so expensive and she goes, I make it for, um, for myself. It's not that hard. It's a lot less expensive and there's no fillers. So for those of you who are not working, that's something for you to consider. Harji John makes his own tofu, by the way. Oh, he does. <laughs> yeah, John, right. You're gonna have to show me how. <laughs> oh, well, so, you yeah. need to go. There's a there's a, a website called Mary's Test Kitchen. Oh, I'll have to write that down. Okay. And and if you go to Mary's Test Kitchen and you type DIY tofu. Oh, nice. You will see, and she does it with lemon. I use the magnesium. Uh, just because lemons are a fragile thing, they will mm. desiccate or d disappear into something else I'm cooking. So, mm. uh, and and you can buy the soybeans. I I bought 12 pounds of them because that's what was available online. That's enough for like a year's worth of tofu, mm. uh, and it's it's very cheap. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's a lot less expensive. It usually tastes better. You know, I just, um, so thanks for sharing. That's a really great idea. I think I'm going to have to look into that. This is a separate topic, but this year I've been really into making my own snow globes. It's not food related, but it's kind of fun with the holidays coming up. <laughs> um, so just to kind of wrap up the presentation, um, part of it is choosing your hard. And I just saw this, someone posted something on Facebook about choose your hard. And for me, I just thought it really resonated with me. I hope it does with you is eating nutritionally is hard. Illness is hard. Choose your hard. You know, physical activity is hard. Physical weakness when we, as we get older and we don't have strength, it's hard. Choose your hard. Drinking enough fluids is hard. I like this one. Constipation is hard. <laughs> Choose your heart. <laughs> um, I hope someone's laughing. I hope you're laughing. Obesity is hard. Living fit is hard. Choose your heart. Stress management is hard. Anxiety and depression, living with that is hard. Um, taking medications is hard. And then, but cardiac procedures are hard. Uh, Choose your heart. So life is hard and f so fight, fight for happy. And so I, I hope whatever you choose is you choose the happier hard. Could you go back to the slide a couple ago that you said we could take a picture of that had, no, two, one or two be before that. That one? Yeah. Seasonal foods, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Just oh, you're welcome. Of course. Just some ideas. I'm sure there's lots of great ideas out there. Oh, you said to take a picture of it, and then you went to the next one. And oh, sure. I'm having problems getting, come on. No worries. Is there only one screen on Choose Your Heart or two screens? Um, one. Okay, thank you. Did you get that other picture? Did you get that picture? Which one was it? Um, did everyone get this picture? Hang on a second. It, I, I thought I took it, but it's not showing up. So I'm yeah, we're good. get back to that. Okay, here we go. You ready? Oh, just hang on. I'm sorry to keep everybody. Oh, no worries. Just let me know when you're ready. I could also I could send the presentation to Linda, and then if she wants to, she could print it out and send it to you. That would be great. I just I don't know why my camera is when I go it goes to something that I took in August twenty second two thousand and fifteen, and I can't seem to get the current picture. Oh no worries, no worries at all. So I don't yeah. appreciate that. Thank oh, you. Oh no worries. 
you know, and this this choose choose your heart. I think this, this resonated with me because I kind of think it's all hard, especially now. Like, I mean, there's some great parts of now, but what I'm saying is like doing everything every single day and trying to go ahead and and kind of make the choices that are best for our life. It's hard, and especially I think at a time of COVID and the stress that we're under, it's all hard. And so it really is about choosing. And even if we choose healthier, it doesn't mean that it's easier. It could even be more hard, but in the long run, it could be harder, if that makes sense. <laughs> so, um, you know, in terms of where do you want to start, you know, I really hope each one of you could think about this talk and this presentation as a whole and really maybe come up with two goals. Um, one, I want it to be a fun goal. I was kind of reviewing the presentation with the nurse manager here, and she had said that at this time of year, she always goes and buys herself a dress, like a pretty, like a, like a dress that's more summery, but they're at the stores, because she, she brings it and says like, I'm gonna be going somewhere warm, and I'm gonna be going someplace nice, and so it's kind of a plan for her future, and she doesn't wanna gain weight through the holidays and not be able to fit into what she bought, you know? That's kind of a fun thing, or I think fun to some people here, won't be fun to someone else, but think of something fun, like maybe you wanna take a pickleball or just, you know, something that, a new something fun, you know? And then another thing you could consider is just a really challenging goal, like on the, with everything talked about it about what has been the, what's the hardest thing for you to do for some of you drinking enough water is really hard or for some of you like staying away from the snack cabinet is really hard so another thing you can do is just dive right in and go for the hardest thing and but choosing the hardest goal may actually give you the most benefit in the long run so please go ahead and, and choose to start somewhere um, and kind of you know move forward. And what's at the end? And that's the last slide. Does anyone want to share what they think they might want to work on? Hey Linda, what are you going to work on? Is everybody still there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I wish you all just a really wonderful holiday season, and I, I hope you feel connected, and I hope you go ahead and just find yourself just getting stronger and stronger in different areas. And I also wish you safety. Um, now is the time that if we ever were to get COVID, it would be now in terms of the percents positive. And um, so please do be extra cautious and careful. Um, I have met people that it was like one outside dinner with friends that they probably were too close with, with their masks off. And actually five women got it and one of the husbands died. So um, yeah, and so and people who have been really, really good this whole time. Um, I had a, a friend's daughter, it was her birthday and she'd been great since March and she goes out for her 21st birthday only to get COVID and have 104 fever for three days, you know, so, mm -hmm. um, so the, either you, if you get it, you're going to have no symptoms, or you're going to have minor cold symptoms, or you're going to have like the diarrhea fever symptoms, or you could end up in the hospital. There's a whole spectrum. Um, but we need to go ahead and please take precautions, especially because you are at greater risk and support each other. I'm so glad that you have this group that you belong to. And I think that's it's a really special time to be connected to people in this arena. So best wishes to you all. Have a great day. Thank you, Margie. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Uh, 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 oh, I apologize course. when I answer your questions. I realized I was muted the whole time I was talking to you. Oh yeah. Oh, no worries at all. Yeah. And I look, it looks like I'll be trying, I'll be doing this once a month, it seems like. And so uh, next month is January. So if you have any suggestions or ideas that you're interested in, please feel to let Linda know. Um, if not, you never know what you're going to get. We'll see what I come up with. All right. Thank you so much. Okay.